everyone and welcome back to Salesforce Mojo. Today we're going to be going over how to translate content on Commerce Cloud. In this video we'll actually go through the setup items of how to turn on translation and how to enable multiple different languages. We'll also talk about the specific pieces you need to know about Commerce Cloud. So if you're trying to understand how do I go from English to maybe Spanish and French or another language, uh, this will be the perfect video for you because we'll be going through the hands-on setup and also uh, getting it to uh, actually translate in the storefront. So let's jump right into it. Now when you're considering translating and expanding your storefront from potentially a single language to multiple languages, there's really three key areas you need to think about when it comes to translating. First is the data. The data means all of the product information, all your category information, and anything else that shows up on the storefront. The second thing is navigation. So how to actually go from you know, a product page to a category page to maybe an Amaya account page or any other sections you have in the navigation, uh, you'll want those to be translated as well. And lastly is custom labels. Now, this is not something that you need to use with a very vanilla storefront. But when you have uh, custom components, they typically use custom labels to be able to easily make changes and updates to that text. Well, you want to make sure that this is actually translatable as well, uh, so your custom components actually come through properly. Now, for our storefront, we're going to set up two additional languages. By default, we have our English language here. Uh, however, we in our storefront want to set up Spanish and French. And for the purposes of today, we'll have a single storefront for all three of these. Uh, and we potentially could have more than these three languages, but just to keep it kind of boxed in uh, these couple of languages, we'll do that. So before we dive in, what are the high level steps we're gonna go through? Number one is we're going to turn on global translation services inside of Salesforce. So if you're familiar with general translations inside of Salesforce, it's gonna go through the same process. Uh, as you are probably used to. Second is we need to go into our experience cloud and we need to enable those same languages so they are uh, enabled inside of the community in our storefront. Third is we need uh, to actually translate the navigation and I'll show you how that kind of step through that. And then fourth, we'll actually do the data translations. So with that, let's jump right into it. All right, we're logged into our Salesforce Mojo instance here, and we're, you can see that we're in the Commerce app on the home page. Now, before we go over and to set up and actually you know, start doing some of the enablement configuration there, I wanted to navigate over to one of our storefronts here. And just for some of the information here, you can do this for both the Aura and LWR and B2B, and you can do this for uh, the direct to consumer uh, or B2C template as well. Uh, but before we actually dive into actually setting this up, let's first go over to administration because I wanted to show you uh, where we're going to start this. Uh, you can see in general setups, we have localization here. And you can see that we have right now English as both a supported language and a default language. So if I click into edit here, you can see that I don't have any other available languages. So that's the first thing that we need to enable and get set up. Uh, we're actually going to come back here after we get the base set up. So let's jump over into setup. And from here, we'll go over to our quick find and we'll go to company information. And once we're on company information, we will click edit. And you need to scroll down to the data translations right here. And we need to enable this service. And once we click save there, we need to refresh the page because there's actually gonna be a new section that shows up on the left-hand side over here. And we'll go ahead and type in data translations, and we should be able to see data translations settings now. Okay, so we can see by uh, default, we get the category and product in here. And if we click in here, we can uh, determine you know, what fields to actually uh, enable for translations. Uh, any custom fields can be enabled for translations and we'll be able to, to translate our default fields as well. Uh, so if you have any custom fields, you can come in here and check those boxes and click save uh, for both category and product. So the next section we're gonna go into is called translation language settings. And we'll hop in here and we need to enable the translation workbench. And once this is enabled, we'll be able to finally set up our supported languages. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click add right here. And you can see we have our default language as uh, English here. Uh, we do need to uh, 
uh, click our name right here as available translators here and click save. I always start with the base language here, which in our case is going to be English. Uh, but then for our case, we're going to enable Spanish and we'll click save. And each one of these is creating a, a, an actual supported language record for us. And then the last one we'll do is French. We'll do the same thing here, click save. And now we have our three supported languages. So now if we hop back over into our storefront here and we refresh the page, we should be able to see our new supported languages, which we do here. And we can drag those over. And if we wanted to, we could uh, change the default language. However, I do want mine to stay defaulted to English. Uh, so we'll click save there. And now we have three supported languages in our storefront. So at this point, I thought it would be good to pause for a second and uh, talk through the different ways we can actually translate. Now, option one is there is a capability to manually translate, and I'll show that um, as we go into products and uh, show you how you can actually do that. Uh, however, if you're doing this for a production storefront, that probably isn't going to be scalable. You might have you know dozens, hundreds, or thousands of products, and clicking through each one of those individually uh, isn't going to be a great experience. And uh, most companies who are doing this have a translation service or a company who's doing that translation service for them. Uh, and those individuals probably aren't Salesforce uh, experts or users, and so it might be a little clunky for them to go click around. Uh, and that's where the bulk option comes in. Uh, so first, let's show you the manual option, then we'll go into the bulk option here. So let's go over into our products, and we'll find one of our products to translate here. And uh, we have, looks like shirts, so we'll start with our shirts. And you can see that there's a new tab that's popped up here called translations. So we'll be able to click on translations, and we can see that we don't currently have any translations. So the first thing we'll do here is we can click add translations, and you can see that it's going to show name and product description. Now again, if you had any custom fields, this is where those fields would show up if you've enabled them on the back end. Uh, but we haven't done that, so we're only seeing the default fields here. Uh, so we actually need uh, to do our English uh, translation first, which is just going to be shirt. And then we'll actually uh, give a description here. So these are some awesome shirts that support the tiny home company. All right. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this because we're going to need to do some translations here in a second. Uh, but we'll go ahead and click save here and we'll have a record here. Now, you, when you're actually doing this in production, like I mentioned, you're gonna have a translation service. Uh, I don't have a translation service, so I'm gonna use uh, Google Translate. And we're gonna go ahead and enter English, and we're gonna change this to Spanish for us. And we'll go ahead and copy this, and we'll go back to Salesforce, add a new translation. And we need to do this for shirts as well. So we'll grab that, and we will dump it in here, and change it to Spanish, and click Save. So now we have two different translations. Uh, we'll go ahead and do a third run, one real quick uh, for our French. And let's do shirt in French as well. Change that over to French and click save. And now we've set up one product with the actual fields here to translate when we go into the storefront. Now you can see how that's probably a little tedious if you're trying to do this for all of your production products. So let's go over into setup and we're going to type in export and we should be able to see a export underneath translation workbench here. And if you come in here, you can see that you can export uh, several different things. Uh, one of the first things that we'll do is our data. Let's say that we only wanna do products right now. We can select that as an object that we're planning to export. And uh, we'll want to do this for bilingual. And let's say that we're sending this to a uh, translator who's going to do this for our French and uh, Eng or French and Spanish, I should say. Uh, and then you have an option of what type of format you want to do here. I've noticed just over uh, years of doing this with companies that a lot of them want the second format right here. And so we'll go ahead and select that and click export. And this doesn't happen immediately. Uh, download the browser. This is an email request. Uh, but it usually is pretty quick unless you're dealing with a lot of different records. Uh, but you will get an email that will allow you to download this uh, in a second. 
So you can see that we got our uh, zip file unzipped here, and you can see that inside of this file, we have two different files, one for the uh, Spanish uh, products and one for the French products. So if we were to take this and open it up in Xcode here, uh, you can see that uh, you have basically your object, your ID, and the field uh, for every single one of the products that are in the instance, and ours uh, has a a fair amount of these products here. And so what you basically need to do is you need to uh, take the source, which is the you know original uh, description, and you're actually going to add a target unit here. So what that looks like here is if we drop to the next line here, we'll go ahead and do target. And inside of this, this is what you actually are going to put your translation in. So this is our Spanish uh, translation file. So we'll put in our Spanish translation, for instance, uh, of that, let me get some of this extra text here, of this is a front door, so that's the actual translation. And you'll go through and you'll add this uh, for every single one of the fields here, so name and description in our case for every single one of the products. And then once you're done with this, you'll be able to go back into your Salesforce instance and do import, and you should have an import here under translation workbench, and you'll be able to re-upload this and import it and that will do all of the uh, translations for you in bulk. All right, so the next step here is we're actually gonna go into our experience builder, and we'll need to do the same type of initial setup of getting languages to show up. And you can kind of see from uh, up at the top right-hand corner here, we don't have any language settings. So I want you to watch this because what we'll do is we'll go into settings, we'll go to languages here, and you can see by default we have our English US. Uh, we're gonna add French and Spanish right here. Uh, and you can see that it recommended those languages because we've already set them up inside of Salesforce. So it kind of knew that we probably wanted those. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click save here. And now that we've saved that and both of them are active, you can see that a new dropdown showed up for us uh, called language, which allows us to be able to switch between these as we go throughout the experience site. So if we were to go over uh, into preview now and change this to Spanish, you can see by default, it's going to automatically translate this home tab right here, but everything else is in English still. Even dropping this down, all of this is in English. So what we need to do now is we need to go back into setup and we actually need to translate the navigation bar. So we'll do that by going over into translations and we'll do translation settings here and we'll click on translate right here and this will drop us into a little bit of an older looking menu here, but what we'll be able to do is drop down our setup component and we're gonna look for navigation menu item. So we found the navigation menu item here. What we'll need to do is actually go over to Spanish because this is the language we're trying to translate for. And you can see that we found both of our navigation menus for both of our ARA and LWR stores. Uh, we'll wanna drop down the ARA one since that's the one we are doing right now. Uh, we'll go back over to uh, Google Translate, just, just like I did here, account information, uh, copy this text right here, and then you can hop back over into Translate. Uh, you can either double click on this or you can click the little pencil on the right-hand side. Uh, but we'll paste that, click Save here, and then we should be able to go back over into Experience Cloud and click this Refresh up at the top left-hand corner. And now when we drop this down, you can see that account information is now translated correctly into Spanish. So as we go through and do all of those, uh, they will begin to translate and show the correct language. And we would both need to do it for all of the Spanish one here, and then we'd need to flip over into French and do it all in French as well. Uh, and then we'll be fully translated on the navigation side. So the last thing that we need to be able to do here is translate our custom labels. So in our instance right now, we really don't have any custom labels. So we'll have to set up a new uh, custom label here just to show this. Uh, but let's say that we have a custom label to uh, show a pop-up uh, confirmation. So let's say order confirmation uh, is one of the, the labels we have in here. And it says, uh, you have successfully, if I can spell successfully ordered your product. And let's say that we had this as a custom label. Uh, you can see that there is a new translations that pops up down here. And we'll go ahead and click in new. You can choose what language you wanna translate this for. 
Uh, so again, we would take this over into Google since we don't have a translation service here. Click copy and we'll paste that in and click done. And now we have uh, that translated for our label right here. Uh, and it shows up on the very bottom here. All right, we're on our storefront now, logged in as one of our users here. And I will note that you do need to publish your site. Don't forget about that. And you also do need to rebuild your search index because you have uh, new variations or language variations that are showing up in that index. But once you are here, uh, you can see uh, that there's really no way out of the box to change your language from uh, the home page. Uh, there is some capability to, if you go back over into uh, your actual uh, editor here, you can see that if you search language, there is a language selector that we can drop into the storefront. And this gives you the ability, if we go into preview here, to select between the languages that are available on your store. So that's pretty nice. However, this uh, component right here cannot be dragged up into the navigation. Uh, so if you do want a custom uh, selector in your navigation, you will need to build a custom component for your navigation. Uh, and that will give you the ability to uh, basically use language selector uh, type of functionality to do a drop dropdown, uh, similar to you know what's up here. Um, however, uh, even though you can't do it in the navigation like uh, you know, a lot of different sites have, you can go over into your settings here. And inside of your settings, there is a location and language capability. And if you drop this down and change it to Spanish here and click save, uh, all of your experience will start to translate into Spanish. Now, some of the stuff will automatically translate as I showed you before, like the cancel and save button here and some of the other uh, configuration that comes out of the box. Uh, but if we go back to our home, uh, you can see that nothing in here is translated, so we'll need to make sure we go in and translate that. Uh, but if we go into products, we'll be able to see our shirt is com uh, correctly translated here. So we drop into that, we can see that we have shirt now, and we can see that we have the description properly translating, uh, which is exactly what we wanted. So thanks for everyone for watching. Hopefully this was helpful to kind of understand the scope of what it takes to actually enable another language on your storefront and the areas to focus on. Click like if you liked the video and uh, put any comments in if you have any questions about uh, translations. Thanks everyone.